Hello everyone and welcome back to the condensed version of my Around the World in 80 Planes flights in X-Plane 11. Previously I had posted the entire flights, they were generally about an hour long or so, and I posted them unedited to YouTube, but of course not everybody can watch that, so this is the edited version. And we begin with a flight from Venice to Innsbruck in a Dornier DO 328, and this is by the appropriately named Dornier 328 Project on explain.org, the forums, and here we are passing over Venice once again. I did it in the previous flight, so there's flights 21 through 40, so this will get us to halfway, and the previous video covered the previous 20 flights, and so here we are departing Venice. Now, there, there might be some artifacting because of compression uh, during this video, and that's because I only have the backup copies of these particular flights. For the later flights, I kept the original a video but I didn't have the hard drive space to keep all of the flights so unfortunately I just have the compressed versions here and that does have some artifacting here uh, well it was a little bit challenging with all the clouds uh, I did of course have a moving map off to the side so it wasn't actually dangerous I just made it overly dramatic for fun and here we are approaching Innsbruck. Lots of lag around Innsbruck. And I think that's because of additional scenery. I I feel like sometimes it's not really the additional scenery package's fault, but conflicts between different scenery packages. And really, my custom... Ooh, that was harsh. Uh, my custom scenery package is a sort of a mess. And it paid me back for landing a little bit rough by... So it sort of skidded off to the side. It was fine, but... Yeah, that wasn't the best landing. I'll have to work with that plane. And next up, we have the Glassair Super 2 Retractable Gear RG by A Pilot. That's A Pilot on the explain.org forum. So, both of these planes so far have been freeware. And we're going from Innsbruck to Stuttgart. And it's another fairly short flight. The previous flight was 113 nautical miles. This is 121 nautical miles. But the glass there takes a little bit longer. It's a little bit more than an hour to get to uh, Stuttgart from Innsbruck. Uh, of course, I flew around and followed rivers and stuff like that. VFR kind of flying. Uh, with the Dornier DO 328, it took about 41 minutes to get from Venice to Innsbruck. So here we are flying over various cities. Uh, during the full videos, I identified which cities all these were, but uh, here I don't remember uh, which one was which, unfortunately. But you get a sense of the scenery. This is uh, Ortho 4 XP photo scenery, so it was downloaded for free, but it's not the default X Plane scenery. I also have additional scenery packages for German cities from Gunter Kempf. And those are available for free on the explain.org forums. Uh, they have some serious buildings. And when I say serious buildings, I mean the textures are really big. <laughs> and so uh, th there tends to be a lot of lag around German cities for me. I really need to resize those to something smaller so that they don't create so much lag. But here we are uh, landing at Stuttgart. We didn't actually fly over Stuttgart on the way in. The airport's off to the side. And so we'll fly over it a little bit better. You can see some of the artifacting off to the side. Sorry about that. But this is uh, Fokker 50. And I think this is by Riviere. R-I-V-I-E-R-E. Uh, -E -E, uh, who has done many Airbuses. In fact, I think there'll be a couple of Airbuses later on. Uh, by that particular user on the xplane.org form. Still a freeware plane here. And we are going from Stuttgart to Cologne. For the most part, we're following the Rhine River up, and there are lots of cities along the way, lots of scenery. Um, unfortunately, the cloud cover was heavy at certain points, so it was really dark, and so that's true there. But by the time we got to Cologne, that cleared up a bit. I don't know if I landed at the major airport or not. In a previous flight that was very similar, I landed at a special field that a uh, viewer requested. That was during a live stream. This, this wasn't during a live stream, but... I don't think this looks like a EDDK. I might have gone... F uh, I wrote down EDKL. I'm not 100% sure that that's where I landed uh, during this one or whether that was during a previous flight. But anyway, here we are at Cologne and the uh, Fokker 50 is taxiing off. And we're taking... It sort of looks like a major field. Maybe this is EDDK. Anyway, uh, having done this a uh, few months ago, I don't recall much, but anyway, and other flights that I've done beforehand have sort of interfered with my memory. But anyway, this is the Grob 115E Tutor, 
and it is flying up to Amsterdam, which is sort of backtracking, <laughs> because for the most part we're trying to go eastward, but this is actually northwestward. But that's because I wanted to hit some, some sites, and also it's helpful for making sure that we get the total distance. I wanted to make sure that overall we, that's a nice little stadium right there, uh, that we covered um, the distance around the Earth at the equator, so the circumference. And so wanted to make sure the course covered that kind of distance, so zigzagging around Europe helped with that. Anyway, so the Grab 115E is a trainer aircraft for, for uh, the German Air Force, I think. And uh, it is a freeware version by Keith Walton on the forums. This flight was 114 nautical miles, but it took an uh, hour and 39 minutes, mainly because I was going around looking at things. So here we are landing at Eham at Amsterdam. So the distances I've logged for these flights are the straight line distances between the airports, but I didn't fly anything like a straight line between them because I was going around looking at things. Uh, and again, I'm flying all these by hand. There's no autopilot for any of the flights. So it's all trimmed by hand and everything. And that's mainly to facilitate my own meanderings. But uh, yeah, the distance I covered all together was way more than the straight line distance that I recorded. Here is a DC-8 taking off from Amsterdam, headed to Hamburg. And this is by Michael Wilson. It was a payware plane, uh, though I think it was originally made for a previous version of X-Plane, uh, not X-Plane 11 originally, it was imported in and uh, updated. It's pretty good. I mean, I can't get a better DC-8 right now, so yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, the package that came in is no longer offered on the explain.org store, so I don't know if it's available. I'm glad I got it when I could. But anyway, the DC-8 is an interesting plane, and we've got appropriate livery. I do try to match the planes with the locations I'm flying, so a KLM livery was good. And uh, here we are approaching Hamburg. Lots of scenery and lots of lag, obviously. You can see all the, those buildings. I can put up with a lot of lag. There might be more lag in this video than I actually experienced because it's a recording and somewhat compressed, but I can generally put up with fairly low frame rates because I started flying flight sims back in the day and not with a very good computer at all. Like, I started off with Flight Sim 4. So, yeah, I'm, I was conditioned to 16 colors and a uh, much lower frame rate. So it may shock younger people that I can deal with the frame rates that I can deal with, but I can. Anyway, so I set the scenery settings as high as possible that I can stand. So here we are, Airbus A310, and I think this is by Riviera, but I'm not 100% sure. Basically, if you see a freeware Airbus, there's a pretty good bet it's by Riviera on the forums. But anyway, we're flying from Hamburg to Oslo, passing over Copenhagen there. That is uh, Copenhagen in Denmark, very nice city. I'll look forward to seeing how that looks in uh, Flight Sim 2020 as well. So uh, my, my history goes Flight Sim 4, Flight Sim 5, Flight Sim 98, uh, Flight Sim 9, Flight Sim 10 or Fli uh, FSX, and then X-Plane 11. I got X-Plane 8, but I never really played it much because it wasn't really that good. But X Plane 11 after FSX. No prepared or prepare 3D or whatever it's called. So, anyway, here we are landing in Oslo. Very nice scenery along the Scandinavian coast. Also, something else I would like to see in the new flight sim. Uh, the airport had issues and that was very distracting on approach. <laughs> uh, suddenly, I saw grass bits in the middle of the runway. Uh, a lot of the rest of the airport looks fine. Uh, those grass strips, those were weird. This is the stock MD-82, so this comes with X-Plane 11, and I am flying from Oslo to Stockholm. Um, you can tell why I picked it, it's because I had the SAS livery, so Scandinavian Air seems like a good choice for this particular flight. Lots of scenery along the way, lots of intricate coastlines and lakes and such, so very satisfying. In a way, uh, going to Oslo was backtracking, from uh, Ham Hamburg, uh, we were sort of going westward there. So again, a little bit of a zigzag, and now we're sort of back on course. And this is what Stockholm looked 
uh, in X-Plane 11 with still ortho 4 XP photo scenery. I don't think there were additional scenery packages here. And we are approaching the airport a little bit low, but that was because I was sightseeing. So I wasn't, that, that's the problem with a lot of these flights is I'm sightseeing and so I'm not lining up properly ahead of time because I want to look around the, the city and I'm not flying in properly, basically. So the, none of these flights should be considered me being very serious about things. Apologies about that. Anyway, here we are with the Sudest uh, 2010, that's SE 2010, uh, from Michael Wilson, but this is a freeware plane, I think. I think I think this was a freeware one, not a payware. Mike Wilson has some freewares and some paywares, and this is flying from Stockholm to Helsinki, and so 216 nautical miles. This is a very elegant plane, uh, not very successful because of the onset of the jet age, but for its time it was very powerful and fairly big for an airliner, and it's got that other name, Armagnac. I think, I, I prefer to just call it the SE-2010 anyway, or you might find it under the name Sud Est uh, 2010 Southeast, I guess. Anyway, so here we are approaching Helsinki, that's what it looks like for me, and uh, pretty good rendition I felt. Well, it's certainly better than what happened to Tallinn in Estonia, uh, you'll see that in a bit on the next flight, but here we are approaching the airport. There are few, uh, part of the reason I did all these flights was to check out how the photo scenery looked in various locations um, and en route and to get a sense of whether things were looking right or not so right. And the next leg involves something looking not so right. Ooh, a little bit of a wide turn there with this airliner. And I decided to make the flight with a Yak 18T and this one is uh, the PWDT Yak 18T posted by Zlin142 on the explain.org forum and we are in fact headed to Estonia from Helsinki. Only a 54 nautical mile flight but this is a fairly slow plane. This is very high quality interior and everything and I like the Tweety Bird texture. In a way it's a shame that I only flew it for 35 minutes for this uh, sequence of flights. And that's a nice view of Helsinki as we depart. And across the water, the channel, I don't know what to call it. Uh, this was Estonia and the problem is lots of Estonia seems to be missing. And you can sort of see it in the distance, there's a lot of houses on the water. It seems to be flooded and this is Tallinn. I, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly right but uh, Explain 11 doesn't know how to render it right apparently. I've tried to fix it, but I haven't had much success. I've had similar problems with the Eastern portion of Kyushu in Japan. Ooh, that was rough. Uh, well, I clearly need more training in this trainer aircraft. This is a trainer. Uh, but you can see the interior there. And here we are taxiing off. But yeah, those two locations seem to have this a similar problem and I've tried to solve various ways tried to solve them in both locations and failed so I don't know what the heck is going on. If I revert to pure default scenery it's fine but otherwise anything else I do uh, with Orphan 4 xp re-downloading the scenery and all that it's always messed up and it doesn't matter which source. So obviously this is a MiG-21 <laughs> hopefully that's obvious and I tried to go fast but there's a limitation of how much you can use the afterburner with the fuel that it carries uh, even though we have fuel tanks, external fuel tanks, and we're headed to Warsaw. And I think this MiG-21 is from Alpegio, but I think Alpegio was updating another MiG-21 from a previous version of X-Plane, so I don't know who the originator is. Uh, so yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's a fairly good plane. Uh, the interior is okay, and we land at Warsaw successfully, but it, it uh, can easily overstress itself at high speeds. It has trouble trimming a little bit and can easily go over speed if you don't pay attention to it. I mean, obviously, if you're not using autopilot, which I wasn't. And so it was a little bit finicky of a flight. And here we have the A50, another freeware plane 
from AFCAD, AFCAD, flying from Warsaw to Budapest. And this is a, uh, I think it's an adaptation of the Illusion IL-76 and meant for AWACS purposes. I got another look at Warsaw here, but I don't know any of the landmarks. The Warsaw radio mast is long gone, so, uh, yep. I should probably brush up on World Landmarks just so I know what to spot uh, in X-Plane 11 as well as in the new Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, we're flying pretty high over clouds, but the landscape is actually pretty good, especially over Slovakia. Uh, sort of rugged terrain over the parts that we flew. It's sort of the continuation of the Alps with Bratislava pretty close to Vienna actually. But ultimately we were approaching Budapest. I sort of descended pretty steeply here. The river is the Danube, though I always have to check myself because I always want to say that the river is the Danube, but it does flow through a lot of European cities, right? Vienna, Bratislava, Budapest, our next destination, Belgrade, I think it also goes through. So I joke around during live streams that it's a pretty good bet it's the Danube. I don't know, out of the Rhine, you know, if you're in Europe. But anyway, uh, here we are landing at Budapest. Uh, the airport sort of lacked enough taxiways. It's not very good resolution around here. I think I need a better rendition of this airport. Uh, that's LHBP. But anyway, on to Belgrade with uh, Let L410. Uh, the Let, Let is a Czech company, so there's a Czech aircraft. Uh, sort of out of position, but we didn't actually pass through uh, the Czech Republic, so or Czechia. So we, um, well, here it is. It's doing this part, and we're headed to Serbia. It's a nice looking plane, but a bit slow. Originally this leg was Budapest to Sofia in uh, Bulgaria, but I decided to cut it shorter because the plane wasn't... it'd take too long. As it was, this flight was 1 hour and 19 minutes, it would be like double that to get to Sofia in Bulgaria. So 163 nautical miles here. This is a freeware version of this plane by KSGY. So a lot of freeware planes in this particular part of the journey. Yeah, mostly freeware planes. We passed over lots of landscapes that were carved out by the meanders of the river. And I think I just followed the Danube all the way down even though it was a little bit out of our way. It's, it was pretty close to direct, not quite though, but certainly more scenic route than trying to go direct. So we passed over some additional cities and here is Belgrade. In theory, this plane should be fairly easy to land, right? Well, it's sure rocking back and forth around there. Oh, what the? And we're off center. Ah, I don't know. That that didn't seem very good to me. Oh well. Yeah, maybe it was a long flight. I don't know. Anyway, next up is a very, very, very nice freeware plane. This is the Tu-134, uh, posted by Captain Eight on the forums, but uh, I think it was based on an original from Alexander Malyugin. So, uh, but it, it's great work. The interior is payware quality. So it's a really good pickup. And there is another plane that's sort of similar in quality. In fact, uh, possibly even better. And that's the Yak-40 by Felis that we'll see later on between Karachi and Mumbai. That'll be flight 39. We're currently on because by now you might have lost track, this is flight 33. Going from Belgrade to Istanbul in the TU-134, here is the approach to Istanbul. The flight was 440 nautical miles, took about an hour and 26 minutes. Istanbul is of course a huge city and has a lot of autogen and therefore a lot of lag. Uh, lots of uh, custom buildings it seems there too. And I was coming in pretty steep and fast, so I had to overfly the airport and come around again. And on the next try, I was rather shallow, and that's what we're at right now. Uh, for some reason, it still took a while to get down to touchdown. But yeah, uh, just a nice cockpit. I should fly this much more. Uh, there, there are certain freeware planes I've. I've I'm definitely going to continue flying in X-Plane 11, even with the release of uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, because they're just so good in here. And of course some payware planes that I'll continue to fly as well. This is the Airbus A330-300, I think by Riviere. 
and AirAsia.com was the best delivery I could find to suit a trip from Istanbul to Batman, entirely in Turkey here. Uh, Batman chosen as a destination mainly for its name. Uh, that is LTCJ on the code. Aside from Istanbul and the Batman area, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I doubt it, but I mainly got photo scenery around Ankara. There was a lot of patches of stock scenery on this flight, but you know, that's photo scenery still, so I got a smattering of it, but I definitely did not cover all of Turkey. There's a nice view there though, I don't know which city that is. The coordinates are in the upper left corner there, there's latitude and longitude if somebody wants to check it out. But anyway, uh, this agricultural areas as usual. And another city, I think this might be Batman now, I think we're coming into land. So here is the airstrip, which is fairly large actually, it's a pretty decent runway. And probably gets a lot of traffic. Again, this is a freeware Airbus A330. I sort of prefer the A330-200 over the 300 myself, but that's because of its long wingspan. Anyway, there we go, touching down. At least this time it wasn't horrendous. And after taxiing, next up is a flight between Batman and Baghdad. And because this is a very contentious split area of the world, I decided to uh, fly in Swiss livery just to indicate that I was neutral. Although I still carry Sidewinders just in case. But uh, this is the F5E by Mr. Sergei. It is another freeware plane and a cute one at that. This livery does work pretty well. That shot is particularly good. I really like the killer whale sort of paint job on the fuel tank. I always took a fancy to that. Anyway, but here we are. The landscape in Iraq is pretty varied and interesting. It's got the rivers running through it, it's got canyons, it's got of course lots of desert. A lot of features sort of indicate some geological stuff going on like plates and such. I don't know, I haven't seen a plate map of the area but um, definitely some interesting stuff. Very dry farmland here but uh, wetter farmland near the river there of course Gotta be close to the rivers. I forget whether that's a Tigris or a Euphrates or something else. But anyway, here is Baghdad. Very large city. And here I'm really off when it comes to landing and I don't know why but I, again I was very lackadaisical about things so as long as I didn't kill myself I was pretty okay with anything. Oh and there's the little earth bobble there as a sort of a G indicator or acceleration indicator so that's cute but anyway here we go and next up is the TB30 Epsilon and there's also a freeware plane as a trainer a military trainer and this freeware edition is by C. Camaleo, uh, Camaleao um, I'm probably butchering that but C K A M A L E A O on the explain.org forums and I'm flying this from Baghdad to Kuwait City. So ORBI to OKBK for a flight of 309 nautical miles. And it's about an hour and 23 minutes the flight took. And so there's southern Iraq. We had some nice clouds involved, making the plane look especially good. This, uh, this angle on planes always tends to make them look the most realistic, I feel, especially if there are clouds around. Sometimes the photo scenery, because the photo scenery was taken at a particular time of day, the lighting on the plane and the lighting on the photo scenery don't quite work together very well to make it seem realistic. Uh, but the clouds help. <laughs> the clouds sort of mask that to some extent. A very barren part of Iraq there. Uh, some settlements here. Lots of waterways here. It's definitely a decently complicated landscape and interesting to fly around. And the border between Iraq and Kuwait is of course very distinct. Uh, you can sort of see it stretch into the distance, but I didn't uh, get that clip here. So that will be in the main video of the flight. This is flight 36. And here we are approaching Kuwait City. That's the downtown area. And the airport's off to the right. 
and this is the approach to the airport. Flying low, of course, because I was taking a look at things. And a little bit wiggly, but not too bad. It's a fairly fast plane and probably compares well to the Beechcraft T6 Texan II, which the US military uses as its trainer. And touchdown. I think the manufacturer of the TB30 Epsilon is Sakata, if I recall. I didn't have a particular reason why I would fly the Sakata on this leg, it just fit as far as something that could handle the distance in a good amount of time. But next up, the Gulfstream G4 by Gansen, and that is G-H-A-N-S-E-N, -E I think. And this, I decided, would be appropriate because we're flying to Dubai and it seemed like a businessy thing because all the business people seem to congregate in Dubai. I'm sure they have plenty of golf streams there. And again, it is a freeware plane. 461 nautical miles, mostly along the Saudi Arabian coast, though eventually we fly over Qatar, Bahrain, and then the U United Arab Emirates. Uh, lots of cities actually, Doha, Abu Dhabi, and then Dubai. I don't know which one this is. I think maybe that's Doha. I'm trying to figure out what city that is or what city that is. Again, uh, the coordinates are up there, so you could double check. This island was interesting. There are a lot of interesting islands, of course. And here... Yep, I'm not entirely sure which city that is. <laughs> Might be Abu Dhabi. I don't think so. Um, though this is definitely Dubai because there's the Burj Dubai, the tall tower there. So that's pretty clear. And here is the landing at the airport. You can see the cockpit of this freeware plane. Not bad. And so waiting for touchdown. Uh, I think we're down. I think we're down. All right. And taxiing at the end of flight 37 and on to flight 38 with the Rafala. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a nice freeware fighter jet by Beber, B-E-B-E-R. And I'm flying from Dubai to Karachi, a 643 nautical mile flight. And obviously with that distance, I intend to use afterburner and go past the speed of sound. Really shiny, nice uh, PBR-ish sort of stuff going on there. And I decided to fly by the bridge to buy again because we didn't really get a good look at it on the way in. And of course, this is fancy and I like the plane in general. It's a good looking plane. And so we depart the United Arab Emirates. The trip is mostly along the coast of Iran and Pakistan, so it's a lot of desert again. <laughs> Sorry. It's just that's just how it is. Uh, here you can see I'm up to Mach 1.6. I think I get beyond Mach 1.7 in fact. But the afterburners can't stay on forever, so needed to super cruise. And I think it did a pretty good job of that. And so here along the Iranian coast, I think this is close to the border between Iran and Pakistan. And taking a look at the ridges there. Always interested in the geological features. Stuff seems to have gone on around here, that's for sure. But, yep, ultimately, here is Karachi. Not bad. Oh, clouds though. And somehow I got a flap over speed. Which is weird, because I don't think this plane has flaps. <laughs> I mean, it's got canards. It doesn't do the flaps. Um, so, yeah. Delta wing planes generally don't have flaps because they don't they wouldn't do what you would want flaps to do. So anyway, I had to compensate for that with uh, aileron trim per usual and it went squirrely on landing. It went squirrely on landing. I have trouble with uh, fighter jets sometimes and I, it didn't seem like the brakes are working taking a look at the speed there, but I think I ultimately got a stop in time at least we didn't overshoot the runway. I had to taxi down the runway a bit though. So here we go. And next up, the Yak 40 by Phyllis. This is so fancy that I wanted to show you the cockpit right up front. You can see click switches to help with startup. There's those ground service stuff, different panels and views in the interior. Yeah, and then there's additional placards like that. 
that CG calculator thing, and then those notes, and then a slide rule for heaven's sakes. A slide rule and other plane settings. So this is... You should have to pay for this, <laughs> but it is freeware. Um, I don't think it's off of the xplane.org forums, it's just elsewhere. So I think search for Yak40 by Phyllis, F-E-L-I-S, is probably the best thing to do. And this flight is from Karachi to Mumbai, 471 nautical miles. Fairly long flight compared to the others in this series, one, or, uh, sorry, one hour and 58 minutes. And I didn't go straight, I mostly tried to stay along the coast. There were bits that I had to go over water, but uh, we wanted to keep it more of a sightseeing sort of thing. I doubt that this was ever an actual route, but I do think Aeroflot does fly into Mumbai. And it does fly into Karachi, I just don't think that there's a flight from Karachi to Mumbai. And I don't know if they'd use the Yak-40, but anyway, um, I thought it was plausible at least. So, it was it was a good choice. I, I'm, I'm happy with it, and I really like the plane. I actually did the full startup. It is a long startup procedure and complicated. I had to use a YouTube video to help me out with that, because the switches... Uh, I think there is an option to have the switches in English, though, so I was just being stubborn. Uh, but anyway, the weather around Mumbai was horrendous, as you can see. That was a thing, but it was possible to see the runway at very low altitudes, so I stuck with that. I was doing most of the stuff, I think I did all the flights with VFR, even when VFR was not strictly speaking advisable. So here we are, approaching... I think this was only the second time I tried to fly this plane, so forgive me. And... Not bad though, touchdown took a while, but wasn't the most embarrassing landing I've done so far. And off we go, taxiing away, and next up, very much an appropriate plane for this flight, an Air India Boeing 707-320, this by Michael Wilson, this was a payware one, a part of the same package as a DC-8, and again, I don't think it's available any longer, unfortunately, but Yep, 707 is a marvelous plane. And this is Mumbai to Jaipur. This is the 40th flight, and so the last flight of this video. 490 nautical miles, an hour and 24 minutes. Overall, flights 21 through 40 covered 6,234 nautical miles in 25 hours and 20 minutes. The average speed was 246 knots. and. Altogether, the first half of Around the World in 8 Planes covered 12,214 nautical miles and 47 hours 35 minutes, as you see a really intricate landscape down there. Uh, must be fluvial, a lot, you know, rivers must have done all that stuff. But anyway, um, 27, uh, sorry, 47 hours and 35 minutes and 257 knots on average. So. We are well on our way to covering the circumference of the world, which is 21,600 nautical miles. So 12,000 is more than half. And here we are approaching Jaipur. I sure hope the photo scenery of places like India is better in Microsoft Flight Sim, because the photo scenery I was able to get for it in x 11 with Ortho 4 XP was not very good resolution overall. Uh, so, yeah lots of areas, you just can't get anything better than level 15. So we'll see. Uh, here we go. No, that's... that's. Why do you always want to land with just your right landing gear, previous self? Anyway, hopefully I'll also learn how to fly a little bit better for my, my newer videos. But anyway, with those flights, we are now halfway through the Around the World in A Planes, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.